What is up guys, it is Barry Michael Doyle here and welcome back to my channel. In the last video, which I'll leave a link to in the description, we worked on setting up a basic React application using Create React App and we set it up to work nicely with TypeScript. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a nice developer environment so that our developer experience is just much more pleasant and you can save a lot of time in the long run when you have a pleasant quick developer experience where things auto format and everything just works nice and smoothly because that makes you a happy programmer and a happy programmer is a productive programmer. Anyway, let's head back over to the project that we created in the last video. Right, so here we are. I'm not going to run the project because we don't really need to show anything regarding running the project at the moment. What I actually wanted to focus on was the plugins. We've got plugins here and in the last video I did mention that I use a plugin called Material Icon Theme. Um, I recommend you you get this because this just gives you the icons that I have here, the nice source one. In fact, if we create a components folder, then it looks pretty as well, which is just, it, it makes you feel better. It's better than the, the lack of icons. It, it just, it's easier to read your, your directories this way. So let's head back over to here, extensions, material icon theme. Just click install, you'll have an install button there. I've already installed it. Uh, this tells you a bit about how it works. I'm um, going to get rid of my terminal for now, but there's a whole bunch of information there. What's important is this Control shift p command over here. So if you do Control shift p you'll get this menu up here. And just type in Material Icons and say Activate Icon Theme. You may need to, when you install this, click re Reload. This will reload VS Code to make sure that the extension is actually active. Right, so that's how you get these pretty little icons here. You shouldn't have too much issues with that. Next up, we're going to use two things. We're going to use Prettier, which formats our code nicely, and TSLint, which makes sure that our code is actually correct and conforms to standards that we set up. So let's start off with Prettier. It actually took me quite a while to get this started and set up the first time I did it, but now I'll just use the same setup for everything. So we've got Prettier code formatter over here, and this is very useful. Just download it, we'll use it later. And then the second thing you want to get is TSLint. So you get ESLint, which is ECMAScript Lint, and TSLint, which is TypeScript Lint. Now there's a deprecated one. Don't install that. Install this one. This It even has a star. Oh, that might just be because I've enabled it. But get this TSLint one over here. And that should get you set up on your plugins. Next up, we need to actually configure them. So we've already configured the material icon theme one by doing the control shift P activate icon themes. But uh, we're going to need to set up Tia and TS Lint. And these two files actually conflict a lot with each other, but I found a nice setup that works nicely for them. So over here, we were in the root directory of our app. I'm going to add a file called dot Pretia, if I could spell that right, RC. There, even our material icon theme sees it as a prettier file, which is awesome. And this is just going to have a few rules in it. It's actually, it's up to my preference, so you guys can change this if you want. I like it when our apps don't show semicolons. So we have this semi-false, and I like it when we use single quotes for strings. Uh, so we'll set this to true. Sorry, I forgot my comma there. This is JSON now that we're working with. And I also enjoy having a tab width of 2 and a uh, trailing comma. Um, trailing comma is always nice. So this is ES5 because it comes from that. And that's our prettier file all set up and sorted. Now you can you can add other rules in here if you just do control space, it'll show you a whole bunch of things that you can do and it gives you what this means as well. So you can customize this to how you want. The point of this is to make everything conform to one standard. So you don't have like one style of coding at one place and another style of coding at another place. If you keep everything standard, your developer experience is just a lot nicer because you don't have to do, figure out what people are trying to do with their code. So it's really great to set this up in a company environment where you have Prettier going. So let's actually test if this works. Um, a good way to test this is you see we're expecting single quotes for our strings and we're expecting no semicolons. So here in our app, we've got double quotes here and we've got semicolons. So Prettier is supposed to fix this. But I just realized before we can do that, we need to actually set this up to work on saving. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to go to file and we're going to say preferences, settings. And here we have the settings page. Now there's a, there's a nice interface here for this, but I'm just going to skip straight over to the code version of here. So if you go to that 
curly braces over there, we have open settings JSON. So I've already actually got the setup on my side, but you guys just need to make sure that you have, uh, I've got a lot of random spell words in here. Um, you need to have this editor.code actions on save source.fixall true. If you don't have it there, just make a new line, type in editor, if I can spell editor, dot code actions on save you know but on save not not on save timeout so set that up inside that you got to say source dot fix all and make that true you're also going to need to do editor dot format on save true and then finally for ts lint later so we don't have to come back to the settings file um let me just look it up ts lint there we go ts lint dot auto fix on save to do that find i just do control f and type it in here so you know i can see my auto fix yeah, I can't spell now. Auto fix. There we go. So there's also an ESLint one from my browser for when I'm not doing TypeScript stuff, but just make sure that you've got this one, TSLint auto fix on save, and you've got editor code actions on save, source dot fix all, and editor dot format on save. Now, when I go to my, I don't know, I don't need to save this because it's already worked on my side. If I go to here, remember we're expecting this to become a single quote and this to become, well, we don't need semicolons, so they'll all be gone. So if I type in control S now, see it, it all formats there it saved everything that's the great thing about this so you can write const my string uh equals barry with double quotes and semicolon and if i type save it formats it down to that so now we've got no semicolons on our app and everything still runs fine everything will work which is awesome next thing i wanted to do was set up TS Lint. And this will help us conform to even more standard heading guides. If we go back out to here and we say new file, we have to say tslint.json. And remember in our settings now, we've actually set this up to work already from the get-go because we have our extensions here and we have our settings file set up to handle this TS Lint. So it's pretty straightforward. So TS Lint's gonna have a bit more and it's a mission to set TS Lint up with, I just remembered I forgot something, but I'll show it to you later. Um, it's a mission to prettier works, but TSLint's going to need some more configuration. So get TSLint to work nicely with here. Yeah, we're going to have to say this extends TSLint, if I could spell, TSLint recommended. And it also extends TSLint config prettier. Now these are two packages that we're going to add via NPM which is going to be quite important. So we've got that. And then this comes with a bunch of rules. Um, oops, this needs to be rules. And we can say curly false. Again, all of these rules are personal preference to me. Curly means enforces braces for if for do while. I don't like it to enforce braces. I like you to be able to say if, and then just keep everything on the same line if it's small enough. Um, no console. You might notice that I actually put everything in alphabetical order just because I'm OCD that way. So TSLint will complain if there's a console log. So you set this to false because I like to use this for tutorials and for devving anyway to show you that, hey, look, this is what the console is showing. So no implicit dependencies. Don't even remember what this does, but I keep this in my normal structure anyway. And another one is no sub sub module imports that's also false because i like sub module imports very useful object literal sort keys a lot of my friends hate this but i really like it when my objects are sorted alphabetically uh, so this needs to be true um this over here is a spell check error like sub module is not known as a word so if you want to add it to your folder dictionary you can add it there and then suddenly it goes into your settings here of C spell words. I usually actually add it to my, let me delete this. I usually add it to my, my actual full user module, but then yeah, so I never see these, <laughs> these words that make sense, but, uh, aren't part of the English language. Okay. So now I've done object literal sort keys, ordered imports. I really like this one. I find it so much easier to read files when all the imports are ordered. I'll show you how that works just now. Quote mark, quote mark is true. So this is your quotations for, uh, in a JSX, I want it to be double. And in general, I want it to be single. And single just matches the, what I said in the TSLint prettier. So yeah, it also doesn't see quote mark as a word, 
but uh, that's fine. That's still legit, it works. And then we have semicolon. Uh, semicolon false. This also matches what we have in prettier. And then finally, after the rules, we want to say a rules directory. And we want to say TSLint plugin prettier. Excellent. Now, finally, before we actually set this up, but before it's going to work, we need to actually add these packages to our package JSON because there's some dev dependencies that we need in here. They don't need to be part of the actual full on dependencies. We can actually just create dev dependencies and I'll show you how to do that now. So if I remember correctly, we're going to need to say npm install dash dash save dev to save this to our dev dependencies. And we definitely want to have prettier in there, part of our dev dependencies. And what else do we want? So we want prettier. We want TSLint. We want, so I'm separating all of these by a space. TSLint config prettier. We also want TSLint loader. I think this is, I don't think we need TSLint loader, but it's part of the webpack stuff. TSLint plugin prettier. Put it in anywhere just because they rely on each other. And also TypeScript. Um, TypeScript is there in our main dependencies. So you might actually just want to move that down to the dev dependencies when it's ready. So that's all good to go. We don't need to add that. So these are all separated by space. I mean, if we, if I make this smaller, okay, I don't know. My, my plugin is just weird. So I'm pressing enter on that. And this is going to create prettier TSLint, TSLint config prettier, TSLint loader, and TSLint plugin prettier. They're going to be put into our dev dependencies, which should be somewhere over here. We don't even need this ESLint config anymore because we're not, we're not really going to be using ESLint. So that's the thing worth noting in our package JSON. But I'll leave it there anyway, just in case I accidentally break something. So this is going to take a while to load. But once this is working, then we're pretty much good to go with our, our type rules and stuff. So that's going to be great. For example, yeah, while we're doing that, there's one thing I like to do. I like to say uh, just FC and then import FC directly from React like that. I like to separate these from each other. Um, sometimes I'll keep these the same, sometimes I'll separate them, but I like to separate like types of imports from each other. Like this is imported from the project and this is imported from my node modules, which is there and we never touch our node modules. But yeah, this is taking its while. I also like to, when there's only a return statement in here, I like to change it to be um, this. And then look, now this needs to all indent, so I'm going to save it. And because of prettier, everything indents correctly, which is also quite nice. Um, I don't set it to automatically convert those return statements into this because sometimes I do want to say stuff above the return statement, but if this is what my project's going to be, then I'll set it up like this. I can always set it up back to return later and put this here and then, okay, you see it looks like a mess now, but if I say control save, everything fixes itself. Sometimes you have to do control save twice to make it work, but yeah, that's the thing. This over here is caused by, I don't remember. Let's see, does this work if I just change it back to react.fc? No, this is me installing TypeScript and breaking everything. So there's a special thing that I need to add here as well. This is going to be some troubleshooting, but yeah, I'm actually back. I think I figured out what the problem is. So back to our terminal over here. What we need to do now is say npm install dash dash save dash dev and we want to say at types slash react. So now because we've got TypeScript here in our package.json, by the way, um, our dev dependencies are all down here. I mean, we could actually move them up. I'll move them up when this is done. We've got everything in here and we can probably move TypeScript down to there as well. So let's move this dev dependencies. Okay. Control cut that and put it up to just above dependencies. Um, TypeScript's not needed in our main project. It's actually just needed in the dev side. So we'll put it in here and just add a comma in there and get rid of that comma. Now, because of TypeScript, uh, because it's actually in our project now and TSLint is checking for types and stuff, we need to add this types react file here. So a lot of modules out there will have type files associated with them. And if you get this area that we had up here, we'll be a bit screwed. So now I think if I just change 
size yeah you just have to update your file so make a space in that and it revalidates this typescript file now it sees the types for react so whenever you have that type of thing where it's like hey i can't find this just go into there and uh see if you can get a types slash the name of the file that you're looking for if that was still a problem our project would still work you just have to say at ts ignore like that and then it would be all good to go and it, like it would still work it would just not validate typescript but in general, I try to avoid .ts ignore. So yeah, just bear that in mind for future. Anyway, this video is getting pretty long. I'm going to make this happen again. Put this back to what it was. Control save. Enjoy my speedy stuff of doing that. Get rid of this. Suddenly that's a problem. It's because we're not importing it. So we can import it directly from there now. And there we go. We're good to go. What I wanted to say with imports, if, if these two were together, see over here, it would complain and it would like move them up there and just be like, hey, uh, well, okay, that was a spacing thing. Uh, I don't think it knows what to do with these imports, so I'm just gonna leave it for now. When you get imports of the same type, you know, then it, it complains with order and it switches them around, which is quite nice. Anyways, guys, that's gonna be me for the video. I have had some really cool comments from people saying they they want a full series out of this, and I don't know what to do out of it. So if you have any ideas, let me know. I'll uh, try make more videos on this, and we can work on from here and get things going. But this is a nice way to get your developer environment set up and good to go for whatever you want to do. Anyways, guys, I'm going to catch you in the next video. Ciao.